Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Blue Jacket with another video. This is a part 4 session of Marine Refrigerating System. In this part 4, you will be experiencing on Marine Refrigerating Compressor, Marine Refrigerating Compressor Shaft Seal, Unloading Mechanism of a Compressor, and Oil Filtering Equipment. But before proceeding further, let us quickly recap the part 2 session, the actual marine refrigerating system that is used on board ship. And this is the actual marine refrigerating system that is used on board ship. Now let us quickly recap. Previously, I have mentioned the flow of refrigerant always starts from the discharge side of a compressor. This is the discharge side of a compressor that flows to condenser. In condenser, undergoes a phase change from gaseous to liquid and then it is used in the receiver and from receiver it is sent to the master solenoid valve after signal from the master solenoid valve it is sent to the dryer in the dryer any moisture content or any water content if present in the marine refrigerant that is dried out and this dried out refrigerant again sent to the siphon glass this here in the siphon glass it is a special type of siphon glass which you will be experiencing in the coming videos and after the siphon glass it is sent to the thermostatic switch which is a solenoid operated valve this valve gets signal from the evaporator room temperature and after when the evaporator room temperature gives the signal for the solenoid valve to open then the refrigerant close to the thermostatic expansion valve here in the thermostatic expansion valve there will be a pressure drop due to the pressure drop the liquid refrigerant entering in the thermostatic expansion valve that will convert into the mixture of liquid plus vapor refrigerant at the outlet of the thermostatic expansion valve and this sends, sends to the evaporator in the evaporator the liquid refrigerant flown in the tubes which is a series of coil tubes in the evaporator the heat is extracted from the evaporator room changing the refrigerant phase from mixture of liquid plus gaseous to completely gaseous state and after Changing the mixture of liquid refrigerant from completely gaseous state, that is, thermostatic expansion valve, capillary bulb, temp senses the temperature at the outlet of the evaporator. If the set point is reached, the diaphragm operated the thermostatic expansion valve will be in closed condition. Then, at that point, at the remaining refrigerant close to the substance side of the compressor per next cycle, and after the remaining refrigerant flow to the suction side, a low pressure will be getting activated to trip the compressor. Today, in this video, let us explore about the main components of the compressor. Here in the picture, you can observe the actual refrigerating compressor that is used on board ship. This is a reciprocating type of compressor. In this reciprocating type of compressor, you will be able to see the pistons which are in the cylinder. Here is Here you can see the a cylinder liner and the piston is operating in the cylinder liner. And this crankshaft is coupled with the electrical motor which is belt driven and here is the suction manifold of the compressor and here is the delivery manifold of the compressor after the compressor works then for the re refrigerant received from the suction manifold it is delivered to the deliver manifold and from the delivery manifold and again it passes to the system for doing its refrigeration work here in the diagram you can see the unloader equipment this is unloader equipment and the flow of cooling oil and here it is, is the oil cooling radiator. Most of the ships uses this reciprocating type of compressor for their refrigeration purposes. In this reciprocating type of compressor, the delivery valve and the suction valve are of late type. And now let us understand the flow of cooling oil of the marine refrigerating compressor which is used for reducing the frictional force or the frictional heat generated by the piston moving inside the cylinder liner and also for cooling of refrigerating compressor parts. The flow of oil is starts from the compressor crankcase. Here you can see the compressor crankcase where the oil cooler is situated. From this compressor crankcase, the oil is taken to the suction side of the compressor. From the suction side, it enters to the manifold and from the manifold, it delivers to the cylinder liner where the cylinder liner forms a oil film between the piston and the cylinder liner to reduce the frictional heat that is generated while they are in the relative motion with each other. And this oil, after cooling the parts, that starts dribbling to again back to the crankcase. At this time, while dribbling, a very small amount of refrigerant 
that also will be starting dribbling to the compressor crankcase. The refrigerant which dribbled into the compressor crankcase again in the next cycle when the compressor cooling oil is taken to the suction manifold, the refrigerant that dribbled into the compressor crankcase is also taken into the suction. This way the cooling oil circulates between the suction manifold and compressor crankcase. Since the refrigerant operates at a lower temperature, suppose let us say the refrigerant uh, that we issued from the evaporator is at around 4 degrees. It is comparingly lower at lower temperature than the cooling oil. Since the refrigerant itself is lowering the temperature of the cooling oil, there is no extra coolant is necessary even if the radiate oil cool radiator is not present also, it, is, will be, it, is, it doesn't make any problem. I have mentioned that is reciprocating compression is driven by the electrical motor which is coupled with the help of the belt to avoid the leakage of refrigerant from the compressor crankcase. A shaft seal arranged uh, at the compressor crankcase casing and this is the shaft seal arrangement in the marine refrigeration compressor. All the marine refrigeration compressors are fitted with a shaft seal consisting of one rotary part and a stationary part. Here you can the picture you can see that a rotary part which is attached to the crankshaft of the compressor and the stationary part which is attached to the casing or cover of the compressor. This prevents the leakage of oil from the compressor crankcase. This seal is fitted between the motor and the compressor casing. Let us explore about this shaft seal arrangement. This shaft seal is consisting of mainly two parts, one rubbing face and one constant face. This rubbing phase, which is in contact with the compressor crankshaft. Uh, when the compressor crankshaft starts rotating, this rubbing phase is also starts rotating in related to the compressor crank crankshaft rotation. Constant part, which is not rotating part, also called as oil hardened phase. Uh, this rubbing part will rub against this oil hardened phase, causing a sealing arrangement. And this is kept in tension with the help of the spring and also with the help of self adjustment below. Here, in this short glimpse, you can explore about the shaft sealing arrangement of a compressor. Here you can see the shaft is rotating and this shaft is driven by electrical motor. Here you can see the shaft, the seal which is the rubbing phase rotating against the constant part which is fitted onto the casing. And this rotating phase fitted onto the crankshaft. Here you can look into the sealing arrangement where oil starts now uh, get into this uh, gap. This is a rubbing phase. And this is a oil hardened phase. Uh, due to this gap present, the oil start entering into this, uh, making this phase and this phase cooling the uh, cooling these both phases and uh, making a oil seal. I think now we have better understanding about the mechanical shaft seal arrangement of marine refrigerating compressor. Now let us proceed into the oil filtering equipment of refrigeration compressor, and this is the oil filtering equipment of a refrigeration compressor. The oil filter equipment is fitted at the discharge side of a compressor. It is used to filter out the carry over oil, oil by the refrigerant during the compression process. Earlier in this slide I have explained you the compressor cooling oil is taken from the crankcase and it is sent to the suction side. During the suction process the compressor cooling oil along with the refrigerant enter into the suction manifold and this starts compressing by the piston during the compression stroke and after the compression it is discharged into the discharge manifold and into the line and at the outlet of the line you will be having the oil filtering equipment and that oil that needs to be filtered out from the refrigerant. For this instance let us think this the oil has not been filtered out from the refrigerant then oil starts all the way traveling from this line to the condenser and uh, in the condenser, refrigerant starts phase changing and when the phase change, it loses its temperature and when the refrigerant loses its temperature due to the loss in temperature, then the oil will get hardened this condenser either in this condenser. If the, the oil is not hardened in the condenser, then again it travels all the way back to the dryer and uh, in this dryer, the oil can be filtered out even if the oil is not filtered out in this dryer and again it passes to the thermostatic expansion valve. In the thermostatic expansion valve, due to the pressure drop, I previously mentioned that the liquid refrigerant received in the thermostatic expansion valve undergoes a phase change from liquid plus gaseous. Due to this pressure drop, if the oil traces are present in this refrigerant, then the oil traces will get frozen up 
or will get uh, solidified in the in the thermostatic expansion valve uh, leading to the malfunction of the evaporator or the entire system for this purpose the oil needs to be filtered out from the refrigerant refrigerant after discharge process and now let us look into this uh, oil filtering equipment the oil filtering equipment is uh, provided with a series of baffle plates the compressed refrigerant entered into the oil filtering equipment as it enters into the oil filtering equipment it loses its velocity due to the wide opening of the equipment when the refrigerant plus oil loses its velocity due to the density difference between the refrigerant and the oil will get separated the higher density particle will be dribbled down to the bottom and the lower density particle which is refrigerant and flown back to the system here you can observe the direction and when oil gets collected at the bottom of the filtering equipment the compressed refrigerant is again flown back to the system and from here it is flown back to the condenser and condenser to the rest of the process when the oil level in this filtering equipment is raised up this float valve will also be raised up and opening the float valve and this oil sends back again to the compressor crankcase i think now you have understood the oil filtering equipment and the importance of oil filtering equipment in the marine refrigeration system if the oil filtering equipment is mal is in malfunction problem with the compressor related to moving parts the high amount of heat generated and due to the high amount of heat the compressor starts malfunctioning that is the mechanical disadvantage if the oil filtering is not working proper and for the system this oil travels along with the higher pressure refrigerant to the condenser and to the rest of the system causing the damage leading to decrease in the evaporator capacity or increase in the compressor load and now let us look into the compressor unloading mechanism or a capacity controller valve and this is a capacity control or unloader valve of a marine refrigeration compressor this unloader unloads the cylinder either during the starting and for the subsequent load control of the evaporators by holding the suction valves of their seats with this unloader arrangement the compressor can run at constant speed which is an advantage with the alternate current motors here in the image you can observe the unloader and this is a suction valve and this is a delivery valve this unloader is a solenoid operated valve back on to this picture i have mentioned that evaporator takes away the heat from the evaporator room and changes the liquid plus gaseous refrigerant into the vapor refrigerant and sends it back to the suction set supports let us see the evaporator is set at minus 4 degrees centigrade then the evaporator reaches the set point then the sensing bulb attached at the outside of the evaporator sends signal to the thermostatic expansion valve to reduce the pressure drop and completely block the flow of refrigerant to the evaporator in parallel it will also send the signal to the thermostatic switch then the thermostatic switch sending the signal to the solenoidal valve to close the solenoidal valve for the stopping the flow of refrigerant to the evaporator even when the solenoidal valve is in closed condition there will be a refrigerant present in the inside the coils of the evaporator up to the suction valve and this refrigerant is still taken suction by the compressor since the solenoid valve is in closed condition uh, still the compressor is running and it is taking suction from the evaporator for, by the remaining refrigerant in the tubes and it is delivered to the, the discharge head of the compressor since it is pressurizing this entire line up to the solenoid valve cause damage to the entire line up to the solenoidal valve so to avoid this damage the unloader lifts off the suction valve which is a plate type valve leading the compressor to ease of its work and and also to avoid the damage of the suction side from the evaporator the unloader is lifting the suction valve to ease the compressor work here in this picture you can observe the unloader of the suction valve i have previously mentioned that suction valve will be taking suction even after the thermostatic switch and the thermostatic expansion valve close this suction will be continued for a very little amount of time till the vapor refrigerant that gets into the suction side of the compressor as the vapor refrigerant entering into the suction side of the compressor even when the solenoidal valve of thermostatic switch and the thermostatic expansion valve is closed it is pressurizing the discharge line of the compressor to avoid this the unloader gets a signal to lift off the suction valve for the compressor to ease of its work and also to avoid the damage i think now we have understood the unloader working and this is the end of the part 4 session of marine refrigeration system in the next session you will be experiencing on the high pressure cutout in the refrigeration system and also the refrigeration condenser still any more doubts do comment in the comment section below
and if you haven't subscribed to the channel subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more updates thank you